Church, we need to talk. We're going through really tense and really divisive times. It's an election year. We're contending with a history of racial tension. We're in the middle of a pandemic that's caused a recession. And now the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Boehner Ginsburg is not going to help matters. All of these topics create a lot of conversation that we're mostly having on social media. And in the best of times, these conversations would be tense, but as things stand right now, they can be really divisive, which is why it's really important for us to understand the concept of kingdom unity. Now, whenever I bring up the topic of kingdom unity, people dismiss it as though I was talking about standing around a fire, making s'mores, having a grand old time. They dismiss it as a nice idea, but not a necessary one. They are wrong. Biblically speaking, unity is central to the kingdom and is something that we should be fighting for. Kingdom unity was prophesied about in the Old Testament. In the book of Daniel chapter 17 verses 12 and 13, Daniel foresees a kingdom in which all people from all nations and all languages serve the one true king. Unity and the kingdom are supposed to be one in the same. This unity is also not created through niceties, but is actually created through the blood of Christ and continues to be built by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what Paul explains in Ephesians 2. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of, of the commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access into one spirit to the father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. It is extremely important to note the seismic shift that the death of Jesus brought to this world. People who would have had nothing to do with one another now become one. People who would have been hostile to one another are now part of the same family. Unity is one of the things that Jesus died for. It is also one of the things that Jesus prayed for. In John 17, the night before his death, he prays for the unity of his current disciples and the unity of his future disciples. More importantly to us is the reason why he does that prayer. Because he says that if his future disciples can be one, just as he and the Father are one, then people will really know that God sent the Christ. That's right. The unity of the kingdom can persuade people to believe in God. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not saying that we shouldn't engage in all these very important topics that our society is engaging right now. The election, racism, the pandemic, the economy, and now who we appoint to the Supreme Court are all very important topics. Sadly, I see many, especially on social media, engaging in these topics at the expense of the unity of the kingdom. And I get it. Right now, it feels as though the stakes are really high. And maybe reposting that really polarizing post is going to be powerful. You also spend time trying to craft your own posts that are going to persuade people, or at the very least, are going to make you think that you're standing for the right thing. But here's the thing. 
if what Jesus says is true, which it is, there is something way more powerful that we could be putting on social media. There is something way more persuasive and something way more virtuous that we could be spending our time on. That is the unity of the kingdom. A unity that was prophesied about, a unity that Jesus died for, a unity that can help others believe. Unity and not our political positions and certainly not social media posts can create the change that we are all looking for. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to our channel so you can see more content like this. Uh, also, we'd love to know what you think about this topic. I know that the topic of unity can generate a lot of conversation and we are going to shoot another video that's part two of the topic of unity in which we're going to talk about things that we can do to promote unity and things that we can do to discourage unity. And if we have enough comments, we'll read them on that video. And uh, also just want to thank you again for watching and go in peace.